This is a special presentation by NeilWeather.com on severe thunderstorm awareness. Hello everyone and welcome to another special installment of our NeilWeather.com Severe Weather Awareness Week coverage. Today we are going to be talking about thunder boomers. Yes, that's right, thunderstorms. Now they can happen pretty much in any place around our great nation. And they can happen any time of year here in Ohio. Even during the winter time, you can hear a couple of claps of thunder during a snowstorm. But uh, they are most evident across the spring, summer, and fall time here, especially in northeastern Ohio. And they can do some pretty serious damage. They have byproducts such as large hail, damaging winds, and even deadly lightning. Now, we want to help you stay safe keep you protected from those byproducts, so we will address some safety tips, how to keep you weather aware, besides informing you how severe thunderstorms and thunderstorms in general form. We want to also talk about how we can keep you covered and informed during severe weather events through a couple of the features that we offer right here at NeoWeather. Now, why all this talk about severe thunderstorms? Well, they are the second deadliest type of weather out of all Mother Nature's arsenal that she can throw at us behind heat and drought. So it is very important for you to learn and get informed about some of the types of severe weather and how to stay safe from them. The ingredients needed to form thunderstorms are moisture, lift, and instability. Moisture is needed to form clouds, but something like topography or an increase in height or elevation on the ground or a front, like a cold front, is needed to help lift that moisture into the air so that condensation, and thus cloud formation, can take place. Instability allows the air to easily rise in a vertical fashion. That way the storm's up updraft, or the main energy center of the storm, can easily perform. The higher the thunderstorm can grow, the bigger and more violent they can become. The warm and moist air mass is propelled through mid cold mid-levels of the atmosphere, allowing for intense storm growth. All of the factors above can easily create thunderstorms, but if you want them to become severe and stay severe, then you will also need wind shear. Wind shear is the change of wind direction or wind speed with height. When sufficient shear is present, the precipitation can be tilted away from the updraft, allowing for the thunderstorm to grow and not get choked off by the cool downdraft rain-cooled air in the beginning stages of the storm's life cycle. Hail can be all sorts of sizes. It could be pretty big, it can also be much smaller. Some storms have no hail at all, while others can produce enough small hail to accumulate up to a few inches on the ground. Even other storms can drop baseball or even softball sized hail. A little bit of understanding how hail forms inside of a thunderstorm can go a long way into realizing why two different pieces of hail can look so different. The updraft carries water droplets up into the atmosphere. Once the droplets are high enough, they reach the freezing layer or the 32 degree Fahrenheit line or the 0 degree Celsius line. Anything above that is naturally below freezing. So the water droplets turn to ice pellets once they reach that stage and then they fall down. The little ice pellet normally gets caught up in the updraft again and goes for another ride into the cold layer, getting another coat of ice around it. Depending on how large the updraft is and how strong it is depend on, depends on if that hailstone keeps getting tossed up into the storm and gets a new coating of ice or not. Normally they'll go through a couple different cycles and get tossed up a few different times and then eventually gravity will take over and the hailstone will fall out. With big large thunderstorms with very strong updrafts the hailstone can keep getting tossed up several times into the cold layer and keep getting new coatings of ice on it. That is when you can see the very large golf ball, baseball, even softball sized hail. The exact shape of the hailstone depends on how it tumbles throughout the atmosphere and makes contact with other hailstones. This is a picture of a hail core within the thunderstorm. You could tell that it's the hail core versus the thunderstorm rain shield because it's a little bit brighter in color. That's because the hail pellets reflect some sunlight. The pink right there is the hail core on the 3D Max Doppler radar network. We can see the hail core forming first before anyone else can, so we can alert you before one piece of hail touches the ground. When you cut the hail in half, you can see that there are rings inside of the hail. That is due to every time that the hail got thrown up into the freezing layer. 
Here is a video out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma from a few years ago of the utmost power of Mother Nature producing some serious hail in this swimming pool. Hailing like crazy. Oh my God. Oklahoma. I know. Oh. Oh my god! That could be a big deal. Holy crap! Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at the pool! And now it's time for the hailstorm to really ramp up. With such a robust, monstrous, just crazy hailstorm like that, it's no wonder that some severe hail damage can be caused by these storms. Car windshields, really any part of a car can be uh, damaged by hail. House awnings, house siding, the roof, the shingles, even windows on a house can all become victims to large hailstones. Even human beings are at risk for falling hail. So this is why we prepared some safety tips for you. Unless the hail is really large, being in a hard top vehicle is safe. Whenever you're inside of a house, make sure to stay away from windows. Even though hail doesn't cause many fatalities, it causes about one billion dollars in damages annually. Not every thunderstorm has hail, and the chance of hail killing you is very, very, very slim. But one in 3,000 people have been struck by lightning in their lifetime. 3,696 deaths were recorded in the U.S. between 1959 and 2003, caused by electrocution or cardiac arrest from lightning. When thunder roars, go indoors. Whenever you can hear thunder, you are close enough to be struck by lightning. The only safe spots to be during a thunderstorm are in some type of shelter, such as a house or inside of a car with rubber wheels and a hard top, certainly not a convertible. If you are caught outdoors in a thunderstorm, make sure to stay away from any kind of long pole or trees or metal things and all they can conduct electricity and that is the worst spot to be during a thunderstorm if you're inside stay away from windows and doors and also stay off the landline telephone if you are outside and unaware if there's any severe thunderstorm warnings or watches in effect for your area and you see some pretty menacing clouds coming at you we can help identify a few of those and tell you what threats to expect from them a shelf cloud is a basically constant lowering in the base of the cloud as it's coming at you. It kind of looks like a loaf of bread just sitting there as the storm uh, moves towards you. It will not be rotating and it denotes strong winds incoming. A wall cloud, eh, could be a little bit worse. Pretty much it's a guarantee that there's going to be a lot of large hail inside of the cloud. Uh, sometimes there's some damaging winds and even a tornado is possible as the wall cloud rotates in this kind of a fashion. Funnel clouds can easily be spawned and eventually they can lead to tornadoes. Part of America being a weather ready nation includes the need to know the difference between a warning and a watch in a severe weather situation. A watch means conditions are favorable for the development of severe thunderstorms. They are normally spread out over a large area. A warning is over a very small area, normally just part of a county. That means conditions are imminent for severe weather. 58 mile per hour or greater winds and or one inch diameter hail. NeoWeather keeps you ahead of the storm. Using the 3D Max Doppler radar network, we are able to see inside of the storm in 3D to better see the different threats that could possibly affect you. We are able to pick out the damaging winds, large hail, heavy rain, clusters full of numerous lightning strikes, and even see possible tornadoes inside of the storm. 
Many of the images here on the screen are some of the pictures of what our radar can derive in our 3D mode. We can quickly see what is happening within a storm and relay the information to everyone so that they can take precautions. We can do this through our live stream coverage, which we will feature when we have multiple severe storms or maybe just one severe storm that needs extra attention. For instance, it's producing three, four inch hail, or maybe damaging winds in excess of 70, 80 miles per hour, or a uh, decent chance of having a tornado or being tornado warned. We can show you the areas that will be affected by certain storms and answer questions that people ask in the chat. Another way to communicate with us during severe weather events is through social media. We are very active on Facebook and Twitter. We will send out all the latest watches and warnings and tell you what areas are next to be affected. Make sure to stay with NeilWeather.com all severe weather season for accurate and timely information. I hope you enjoyed the video. I am NeilWeather.com forecaster Brian Ivey. Please check us out on Facebook and have a great day.